what was it like? What was the process of adopting Tristan? Okay, so we were able to adopt our son Tristan in um, a, a non-conventional way. I was a teacher in Swainsboro for a long time, for like 15 years, and this you can wonder turn, where this takes me. Turn left, and then <laughs> there's more. Um, and and so you end up teaching lots of people, and I, I taught these two sisters um, in my classes throughout the different years. I knew they had a younger brother who eventually made it to high school, and I met him. I never had the chance to teach him, but he was in a club that I sponsored, <clears throat> And he was a band kid, and he hung out with all these other good kids. Um, and so I, I knew of him and knew his situation a little bit in that he was at a local sheriff's home, and there had been um, uh, negative family situations that had ended up him having to move around a lot and eventually being taken out of his mom's care and then eventually taken out of an aunt's care and lived in the sheriff's home. At the time, we were having trouble um, conceiving again. And we wanted more babies than what we had, and mm-hmm. so we were looking into adopting. Uh, so he ended up at our house one day at a party for that club that I mentioned, the academic team, a Christmas party. And he was riding home with another kid that you could just tell they didn't really get along that well. And Sam, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> I do that all the time, get you guys mixed up. Uh, mm-hmm. Catherine asked, <laughs> what's the deal with so-and-so? Why did he go home with so-and-so? I said, oh. Oh, and the lady who picked them up was a black lady, who and both these are white guys. Uh-huh. So, like it, it, none of it worked out. Like in a, in Catherine's mind, is like, uh-huh. this, what's going on here? Um, and you could tell they weren't mixed race or anything. So, I said, oh, they they both live at the sheriff's home, and the sheriff's home are generally for people who have been taken out of homes and are very long term situations. Oftentimes, are up for foster care and adoption, and. So we got into a long conversation about his situation and all that good stuff. Um, And as I said, we were thinking about adopting and maybe foster care. And so we really quickly got to a point in the conversation where, like, is this God putting this kid in our path for this? And so we started looking into that. And as foster care slash adoption situations go, it was a very easy road. Mm. There were a couple of little legal hurdles just because of it wasn't a, the normal adoption situation. There were um, family member extended family members that had legal custody of him mm. that we were worried about their motives as to either holding on to him or letting him go. And so we had to kind of overcome those. We had we had a great great relationship with a local lawyer who's familiar with this kind of stuff, and he worked with us very well. And so within a year, he was living in our home. And within, you know, when once he turned 18, we officially adopted him. Um, and he only came to live with us when he was 16. This whole process began when he was 15. So I guess that's a long way of saying it was really easy to adopt him. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently we missed all the troubled years. He had a rough time of it in middle school. Mm. By the time he got to us in high school, he had leveled out. Mm-hmm. And we've gotten so lucky because the kid, he hung out with the best kids in the school and he wasn't on drugs and he didn't want to want to cause problems. He really wanted the best out of life and what life had to offer in the best possible way and um, has been a joy. So there. Awesome. He's now 26 and he's engaged to be married and pursuing a professional career and adjusting as needed in those respects, so he's doing great. 